welcome back to Doctor Who, the community show. We have not been cancelled yet, which means, oh yes, we are automatically better than Doctor Who itself. That's how that works, right? Thank you again for the continued support. It has helped me find my passion for hosting and getting involved in the community a lot more, because beforehand, I sort of wasn't. <laughs> Definitely felt like an outsider for many a year. Uh, if only something like this could be my job. Wouldn't that be cool? How did Crystal D do it? She had the fan show. I mean, asking for a friend, who is me? I am the friend. How did she do it? Begging a little early today, aren't we? Mm. Fair point, but that does remind me. I received an email from MCN London Comic Con. Yes, that MCN London Comic Con. Uh, about applying for a panel. It wasn't just you spent to me specifically, it was I'm on a mailing list. It gave me the idea to do the community show with live guests as a panel at Comic Con. I have sent off the application at this point and I won't hear back until early September but I have a few guests planned, I won't say anything yet just in case plans don't quite go into motion which is highly likely. It is a long shot but thought I'd let you know and if you want to drum up some excitement let Comic Con know it's something we want to do. You never know! Anyways, on with the show. Before time began I was waiting for the Timeless Doctors to come out, and still am. There was an early version of it, I believe, called the Ten Doctors or the Twelve Doctors, released a while ago that I can't seem to find anymore, but he's revamping it with the newer Doctors, and from the little glimpses he's been sharing on Twitter, it looks awesome! And there is also a trailer for it, and I'm just so excited for it. This is one I've known about for a long time, I've been following it for a while. If you somehow don't know about this project, Go and follow him on Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, everything will be linked below. You won't want to miss it, trust me. <laughs> and where I may be praying for a release date, please don't badger him about when it will come out. I know it's tempting, but a project like this, unsurprisingly, will take a lot of time and a lot of effort from what I'm assuming is mostly one dude. <laughs> Another exciting project is 3D Doctor Who's upcoming CG adventure. It is called Infiltration of the Daleks. It reminds me of those old Dalek Tales episodes, do you remember those? You may already know him from Twitter and Instagram and stuff, he does a lot of CG uh, Daleks especially and well if you know him from that you know it will look amazing and I mean you can see it here, it is amazing. <laughs> the extremely realistic motion and animation of everything, as well as the beautiful colour palette, makes this one just a must for Doctor Who fans, so do that, watch it now, please. You know what you must do. We will rise above every other Dalek and be hailed as heroes once more. Oh, and it'll be out in July, so that's now. I'm, I'm recording it in late June, but this month you're watching this in July. Time is weird. J.A.W. Productions, or Jaw Productions, he is another figure adventures creator to add to your watch list if you haven't added him already. Not only has he released a Series 6 trailer, he has also released Episode 1 in its entirety for your watching pleasure. Also, where I will admit that I'm not the biggest fan of the 13th Doctor, I, I'll sick my fam on you, better than not my doctors, but regardless of that, I'm happy to see that online creators are willing to fill in the 13th Doctor gaps as Let's be honest, BBC hasn't exactly put much out in the way of her Doctor. <laughs> like, she doesn't get nearly as much promotion and other media compared to Tennant and Smith in their day. It's the same reason I jump on any Twelfth Doctor stuff, because Peter Capaldi is th the best. But yes, anyway, Jaw Productions, check him out. Don't give me the whole spiel about not knowing. I saw the look on your face in there. That man is the light of my life, so if he's in any sort of danger, I don't want to be patronised. Okay. Sorry. So? I think it's almost definitely the chip that's causing this, but I'm not sure if it's a fault as such. How do you mean? 
think it's likely there's a bigger picture that we're not getting to see yet. Keeping on the same track of figure adventures, DW to DWFA, or James Blowers, is a well-known figure adventures creator who's been around a while, and he's released a brand new episode. It is called The Price of Failure, and it follows not the Doctor, but an original Sontaran character called Commander Selak. And it is just amazing how that slight change in the formula can just make something seem much more original. So if you somehow haven't already, go and check it out. Seems like we tripped an alarm. That means there's power, and we need power. Keep alert. And finally, some blocky goodness with Alex's The Execution. I'm not surprised that Minecraft is a hotbed for these Doctor Who fan films. Uh, as a game, it just makes sense, as it's a sandbox, do anything you want game. But I'm surprised there's not other games that are used for that. And I don't just mean Doctor Who's official games, like that VR one is just begging for someone to do a fan film in it, surely. I, I know Roblox gets some, but I, Ch Gary's mod is a perfect example. There's a bunch of Doctor Who mods on there. If someone wants to fill that gap, you go for it, because I think that would be pretty epic. Anyway, sorry, tangent over. Go and check out Alex's The Execution, or I'll find you. Yeah. Its name must be said. For now, you're on a deserted planet. Yes, me and my friend figured that out. But why hide in the cave? You don't want to know. I do. I can help you. When I first saw this bit of news, I knew it was going to be the first thing I was going to mention in this segment because, um, well, here's a reenactment of my reaction to it to give you an idea. Oh my god. Brian Blessed is playing Omega! Oh. This is for the Cutaway universe. If you want to find out more about it, check the Twitter link in the description. But I mean, do I really need to promote it any more than that? All you needed to hear was Brian Blessed and Omega, you smush them together and everybody will watch it. And if you don't, if you're not somehow excited by that, you need to thaw out that cold dead heart of yours. Moving on. Hey you! Yes, you. Do you want to know what it takes to be truly established in the Doctor Who community? A metric I've found useful is if they get in trouble with the BBC in some way. For example, their content just being that good that it gets the BBC's attention and makes them a little bit worried. Judging by my metric, Vocalab is definitely what I would call established. They've only released a couple of audios so far, and usually the first audios out of a new creator is a bit of a mixed bag, no, every single one's a home run. I'd call it showing off, but no, no, it is showing off. Rude, quite frankly. Tone it back. Yeah, you're making us look bad. Brilliant voice cast, brilliant scripts, brilliant accompanying art that's giving Big Finish a run for their money. Go and check them out. I, uh, can't get it to do wood. Hello, I'm the Doctor. Also, on a side note, I like to think my Doctor impressions are pretty good. Like, you can hear them and you'd be like, oh, I know what Doctor that is. But then I hear actors such as Elliot Crossley's 10th Doctor impression and uh, Jacob Dutman's 11th Doctor impression, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's how you do it. Oh, come on, don't get yourself down. Yes, come on, they're not that terrible. Oh, bugger off, you two, you're only proving my point. Ah, right, so we, we should just, uh... Uh, go? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Josh Carr of the Who Knew podcast has put out a casting call. Taya of Spectral Horizons gave me the idea of including these casting calls as a way to extra promote and... Yeah, good idea. <laughs> I've actually auditioned for one of the roles, uh, for the character Billy, I do believe, so if I don't get that part, uh, I don't know what I'll do with myself. But from what I hear of this project, it's gonna be one to not miss out on, so if you want to audition, 
check out the linked tweet in the description. Tailored Vision is another one of those creators that is just so gosh darn well known. He has done many Doctor Who projects over the years, but the one I am going to be mentioning and the one that was linked to me is his audio series. Specifically, I was linked to series three of his audios, but I've wanted to listen to all of them, so I'm currently halfway through series one right now, and I can tell you it's brilliant. Also, from my online interactions with him, he just seems like a very nice person, so promotion! And that's when I stumbled out here and found, well, you. Or should I say, me? Quite. Oh, but really, you can't be. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm you, Doctor. No two ways about it. Oh, no, no, no. You can't possibly be me. You're far too young. Too young? <laughs> no pleasing some people, is there? Someone mind explaining to me what the heck you two are on about? I thought I just did. Weren't you listening? Yes, well. You were hardly making yourself very clear, now were you? Security Kitchen Productions, also known as, well, the best name ever, if we're being honest, has released a Seventh Doctor two-parter named The Pit. Does he shout ace? Does he play the spoons? Is the Seventh Doctor impression better than mine? It is an obvious yes to the last question, but to find out the rest, go and watch the audio. Corinthians. 13.11 Pastor I knew used to use it as the basis of his final sermon, for facing his greatest fear. We must never abandon the child in all of us. I'm looking for Jack the Ripper. <sighs> Let's go. Hello, welcome to my Let's Play channel. <laughs> I heard this is quite an easy one. Oh, here we go. Oh, I'm waggling my little feathers. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, I'm showing my bits. <laughs> I did this with Modern Nostradamus once. Oh, 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 I'm shaking it. Oh, here we go. Shake it again. <laughs> this is quite fun. Oh, getting the legs involved now. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm already quite sweaty. Perhaps a long scarf wasn't my wisest choice. <laughs> oh, I'm back to the chicken. <laughs> I think I still own Casanova a chicken. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's being weird and talking into a mirror, you know what that means, it's time to talk about artists. Although you would have also guessed that from, you know, the title card I do before each segment. Jerry TDP, also known as the lovely chap who made the show's logo, has made a terrifically atmospheric fan art for Storm Warning, which makes two times in a row that I've featured a Storm Warning bit of art. I guess Storm Warning's just a really good one for fan art, because I featured another bit of fan art for Storm Warning in the last episode, so... Huh? I guess it's just that good! Well, of course it is! It's both my first Doctor audio adventure and Charlie's! We are the best eighth Doctor TARDIS team! Lucy Miller eat dirt! Yes, exact! Wait, you're not Jack dressed as a character? You can't prove that! But yes, go and check oh, out- <laughs> I'm sorry! Whose show is it? My voice is much smoother, like butter. Go and check out Jerry on Twitter for more art and Doctor Who poop goodness. Adorable is a word I would use to describe many things. The adipose, myself, my girlfriend, this drastic puppet I have for not much of a reason, and the next piece of art. Vicky has created this, this piece of art. Also, she's currently open for commissions, so if you want a piece of that, do it! Connor Adkins is a chap I've actually had the pleasure of meeting at a Phantom Films event earlier in June. And his signature style, as it were, is a doctor or companion or whoever as a full shot and uh, a close-up of the face. And the detail on display is outrageous! He's often at a lot of Phantom Films events giving away or selling his uh, art pieces to be signed by the actors, so if you ever want to meet the man or get a piece of the art for yourself, definitely go and check out some Phantom Films upcoming events. Gallifrey and Gothic is one I wanted to mention because his style is so significantly different to what I've featured in the past. Typically I feature sort of the cartoony, cutesy art styles, which I love, but it's important we show off all different types of art, including, as you probably guessed from the uh, name, Gothic. 
Again, I do love the cartoony and cutesy stylings of uh, Bo or Blue Fruity, but I also love a bit of grim darkness. Yes. Lego! Who doesn't love Lego? Or probably people with not a lot of money in their wallets. Jesus Christ, they can be expensive, can't they? Brick Pandorica on Twitter makes these terrific little dioramas, like of Totters Lane and whatnot. And again, despite them being so small and blocky, the detail on display is so good. And again, it's Lego. It's got such a wide, universal appeal that how could you not love it? Sorry, I just hit my dress. I'll just put you... <laughs> Why did I think of that earlier? Oh damn it, that's the last one I was mentioning. Anyway, anyway, sorry, right. Uh, Jeff, Brick Pandorica, that's what I was talking about. Go and check him out. But don't blame me or Brick Pandorica if you look at those pictures and want to buy Lego. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to go to your wallet or purse. You're going to open it up. And all that's going to be inside is Donna's memory of the Doctor. Too soon! Who are you? If audience retention is to believed, the interview segments of this show are rarely the most enjoyed. It's always like fan film, like audio and cosplay and interview and then... Perhaps that's down to me and my questions, I'm not sure, let me know, but we're still gonna do it. <laughs> for two reasons. Reason one, it can show you a different or perhaps behind the scenes look at a creator you are a fan of. And reason two, I just like talking to new people. Uh, I mean, well, like-minded people. People in the outside world scare me, but, you know, online people are fun. <laughs> Although I would adore to do some in-person interviews in the near future. That would be cool. One of the people I have come across that I've wanted to talk to is Katie Haynes, a 13th Doctor cosplayer. She does these funny and upbeat TikTok videos and I love them. They, they, they are happy and wholesome content, and you know me, I am all for that. I think it's also the energy she brings to it. She clearly has so much love and enthusiasm for the 13th Doctor and for making these videos, where it's, it's just infectious, you know? I reached out to her, and she very kindly agreed to this little interview, so enjoy. Hi. Hello. Hello. You, you can you can hear me, yes? I can indeed. Bro, I heard your voice and I was like, wait a minute, am I talking with David Tennant? What's going on? <laughs> I'm liking the uh, TARDIS collection behind you there. Oh, that is that is a, uh, a very small set. <laughs> so the one in the middle is the Funko uh, TARDIS, which I actually got from a friend. She works in a uh, consignment shop. Someone, I kid you not, brought in a whole bunch of Doctor Who stuff. They brought in an 11th Doctor Sonic, which they <laughs> should have kept because you can't get those for, for anything anymore. My friend yeah. kept that, which good on her. She brought in a 4th Doctor Funko, a Dalek Funko, a K9 Funko. Nice. Uh, and I got the whole collection. The poor fourth Doctor, he's got a little bit of marking on his face, but it's still, <laughs> it's a fourth, it's a fourth Doctor Funko. And it's worth and, and every I, penny. Two middle ones are uh, salt and pepper shakers. One of them is a bank, the other one is a tea kettle. And what you can't see in the back next to um, the Cuisinart is a cookie jar and a... It's supposed to be another cookie jar, but I I put a tea, I made it a tea holder. That is not... I know you're recording. Uh, please forgive me as I move this because I know some people can get motion sickness. So I'm going to move very, very carefully. This is my Doctor Who collection. Um, yes. <laughs> Oh, it's keeping on. Let's keep going. Still going. Still going. Oh, and there's the Jedi. In my room here is uh, a lot of the, the toys that I got commissioned. Uh, the doll collection. Oh. oh, there you are. Whoa, ah. okay. Whoa. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Right. Let me, uh, let I me have this whole the... gag set up, right? And this yes. whole gag was oh! going to join like that. <laughs> <laughs> Technical issues. Also, I love your collection in the back. Oh yeah, oh trust me, it, it spans the flat. I, I, if oh, I could nice. take up the webcam, I would. Sorry, my for whatever reason, my smoke detector is going off. I think I need oh, to change the battery. So, so yeah, if you hear a beeping throughout, it is, I don't know, I guess I have to change the battery in the smoke detector or whatever. It'll... Hopefully it's not like just smoke that you haven't found yet. Where I am, yesterday we had a tornado warning and I had to go into the basement 
Oh. And I was, I, I met someone else who would just come in to pet sit for her kids, two dogs. And one of the dogs just leapt into my lap and I was like holding this dog for, of course, everything was fine, yeah. but it was, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to get stuck in a tornado, uh, warning and you're downstairs, nothing better than meeting a dog. Yeah. Works a treat. I mean, as long as you've got like a little companion. Exactly. And I put the video up on TikTok and everyone's like, it's the new K9. It's the new K9. <laughs> she did mention in one of her two, um, quarantine videos that she's got a 13 still has the blueprint for k9 oh. so i would love to get a k9 13 episode i think if you if if someone was like on pain of death you have to pick your favorite companion i would just go with k9 sarah jane absolutely one of my favorites um she's actually in my favorite episode which is school reunion love bill bill potts Martha Jones needs more love, people. Oh, she does. She does. She got so badly treated by Ten as well in her tenure. It was ridiculous. <laughs> have you read Have you read any of the Thirteenth Doctor comics? Not. No, it's on my reading list. Go, hang go, on, go. Hang on, hang on, hang on, oh, hang on, hang on. Running. If you are a fan of Thirteen or phenomenal Doctor Who writing in general, meet your new best friends. Oh, those covers are good. Someone get this in the hands of Jody, like right now. <laughs> Latest one that just came out is the 1013 crossover. So they end up in uh, London. Well, I should say my favorite doctors of all time. 8, 11, and 13. I call them Team Tea Time because they all love tea <laughs> and they're all very uh, happy cinnamon rolls. Guess who shows up? Yes, Martha. And I love the fact that out of everything in this clothing shop, she just wants a pair of socks. Naturally. That, that's her. And she says, and I will read it, and I'll do it in 13. So she says, uh, me, hang on, how did, how did she know my last name? And she goes, don't know how I missed it back in the day. All over her face, even when I wasn't there. I'm sorry, Martha Jones. I'm so sorry. I was really thick back then. <laughs> I am a new Whovian fan, but I have a lot of respect for the old and I have listened to some big finish. Love it. Mm. There she is. Yes, I saw it. I was Googling the Corsair because I didn't really know much about it, and that came up and I was like, oh, that's that's not what I was expecting at all. This but is I my favorite it. shot. This is my favorite shot of the two of them. Deeply uncomfortable face there. It's the way I would love to see 13 represented. And All right. she gets a lot of flack for her way for the way her episodes are written. And I'm gonna go on record and saying I don't think like every you know, so many people give season eleven and season twelve flack. There are phenomenal episodes. The Demons of Punjab, I love it. Uh Kerblam. But what, the last scene in It Takes You Away, where she's talking to the um the soul attract. I was afraid. Right. Yeah. The way she says, I wish I could stay. She means it. She wants to, she, you know, I wish there had been an episode where she had to stay with the soul attract. Ooh, that would have been And fun. they build up this French, you know that the doctor is a, a being who doesn't want anyone to be alone, who doesn't want anyone to suffer, no matter how, the, the doctor amazes me. Uh, Peter Capaldi, his speech, yes. his, <laughs> His speech, uh, here's something you didn't see coming. I forgive you. Oh, I love, oh, from the zygote. Yes, I love, the, I mean, 12 is easily one of my favorites. Just his performance is spot on. 12 is not one of my favorites. Is he a bad doctor? No, there are no bad doctors. There are just bad writers. Damn right. I love and hate the movie, but, um, <laughs> Let me, let me make this, let me It's a strange clear. thing. There are moments in the movie that I literally, I watched the movie for the first time. Half of me, I'm watch. I'm like, we, we, I, I, England should never forgive us. England should go back to war. We butchered. <laughs> Civil War II, let's do it. I, 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 we are, we are not worthy of your forgiveness, but. The two caveats. And you know what? I'm going to give an honorable mention to who was the companion, because she was good. Grace. Um, Grace. Grace. Oh, yeah, it was Grace. Was it was, Great. Grace was good. I actually did a podcast with the TikTok Whovians group uh -huh. on, on Chimes of Midnight. 
and it it, it is it's like an episode of the twilight zone almost it's just so strange we are halfway in and i got really off topic so questions (laughs) You're seeing behind the scenes stuff. Oh yeah, that's that's totally stuff that no one should ever have to see. There we go. Now it just looks really like threatening. Like, just talk to me. Don't worry about this. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. Well, luckily we were pretty much just chatting away casually about uh, yeah. chimes of midnight and your uh, Jedi costume made by yes. very professional people. Twin roses designs. Ooh. Anyone who's looking to do a Jedi cosplay and get it done on uh, on a professional on Twin Rose Design. This is what I'm all about. I like the promotion of nice people and talented people. This is good. And in case it did got, get missed, please yes. read this. <laughs> Before we get on to the questions, I do have to say, I feel like this is a good comparison between homemade cosplay uh, and, <laughs> and someone who has put a lot more thought into it. Well, all of this, um, this is all from, I got my jumpsuit from Costabby, her, her Cost prison Daddy. suit. This is all, if I'm not mistaken, the, the shirt, the, the trousers, and her coat are all from, why do I keep, a uh, cosplay company. And I have spent collectively at least, given the amount of uh, coats that I own of hers, I would say we're, we're we're looking at four figures for all that I've done, including including keeping my hair dyed. Which yes, oh, um, I actually right. it's it's highlighted. And that takes a lot to keep up. I mean, I'm not gonna dye my hair. The, right. Oh no. Oh, that's a bad look. Oh, oh yeah. I made a mistake here, but like wizard's cloak from amazon and the oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i've gone the cheap route <laughs> this is a look what is this it's actually a good look on you thank you i'll take it with the 13th doctor videos that you make all these uh, all the tiktoks it's clear that you're from the energy that it's something you really really enjoy so what is it about making the videos that you love so much it's making people laugh it's making people smile. It's comforting people. It's finding myself in this character. One of the reasons that I love 13 so much is she always has this kind of positive energy. Very much like 11 and 8, there is this excitement about life. I love her excitement about, you know, attending a wedding, getting a package, yeah. having henna done. Everything, oh, yeah. everything that is uh, a sofa. <laughs> if I'm able to make someone smile, make someone laugh, connect with someone, give someone reassurance, help them through a hard time, it's and and doing it through the doctor and finding that character, it does feel very genuine to me. I never want to do a video just for the sake, just for the sake of doing it, because that feels right. fake. I always have to have some sort of either reason for doing it or want for doing it. I get inspired by other 13s, 101 cosplay Rose and um, Grace the 11th, if someone's day is being really bad, if I can make them smile, then it's totally worth it. See, that's the exact reason why I wanted to get the chance to interview you, because it's clear from all those videos that you have such a passion for the character and a passion for doing what you're doing. Was it the 13th Doctor that got you into cosplaying or was that something you were doing before? I had been doing cosplay before. I really got into cosplay, I'm gonna say 2011? That's when I really started to know that it was a thing. That evolved into, you know, I've done Weiss Schnee from Ruby. I did Castiel from Supernatural, who I have to say is one of my best. Oh, yeah. I cosplay, I honestly, I cosplay guys better than I cosplay girls. Um, 13 is the first female identifying character who I have felt comfortable in. Because I've also, I've done Weiss Schnee from Ruby. And if you look up any of her cosplays, um, I do her season four. And there's a lot of skin up here that is not yeah. covered. For me, I am not someone who can carry off something that's very revealing. I just don't feel comfortable. But it's not for everyone. No, it's not, it's not for anyone. And if you can, you're brilliant. You're fin- genuinely. You are that comfortable in who you are 
show it off, do it. It is just for me, I am not someone who really feels comfortable. My next one was going to be, uh, where do you get it from? But I suppose we've already answered that straight away. Yeah, we went to, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Skip that one then, done. What are some of your favorite videos you've done so far? Probably anything where I've done a POV or a role play with either the TARDIS family, which is the family that um, myself, Crystal, uh, Leo the Lion, and Amy, Leif Ronan started, and we just, it, it exploded. I feel like I'm at my acting peak, mm. particularly when there are people who can Ah, there we go. Oh, there we go, there we go. You were saying something about one of them can cry on cue, I believe it was? Oh yeah, somebody can cry. Um, anyone where I'm really in the acting zone and really giving my all to the character, those are my favorites. Well, I've, I've done acting for a while. Well, acting, I do it on my own. I envy people that can just turn that on like a fountain. Yeah, if you can, oh my God, I want, I want your... I want that, I want that ability. On your tear ducts. The last question that I have before, again, the computer destroys itself or yes. like, and missiles rain down. Why is the 13th Doctor crossed with a Jedi so cool to look at? I don't know. <laughs> I The idea that, um, well, I think any Doctor, I mean, oh my God, imagine if like, there is Dustin Doctor or Dr. Dustin on TikTok. He, I got the idea from him. Okay, here he is. He did the 10th Doctor as a oh. Jedi. And that piqued my interest, and I was like, I have got to Brilliant. try this. Mm. I'm, I'm a crossover fiend. I love it. <laughs> That's why I do a ton of Disney videos, yeah. Marvel, anything. There is another 13th Doctor Jedi. I can't remember. With Star Wars and Doctor Who specifically, they do cross over so well as they're both sort of spacey wacy things. So oh, it's absolutely, kind of natural. absolutely. Oh, I can't find her. No. Abby, Abby of Trocken, who is a part of the TikTok Whovians. I do know Abby of Trocken. I didn't know she did one too. She did a uh, a Jenny Flint because of 13's costume. Her coat is already semi, you know, Jedi esque. Yeah. In respect with the with the hood, and then in terms of the pants, all you have to do with these, you can actually just remove the suspenders, and that's it. I've got my I've got my attire. <laughs> and I have no affiliation with Disney at all. I am not on their payroll. I just, these are the stories that um, have, the show made me love 13. The comics brought me closer to her. Again, thank you so much for coming on. I will, I will so free welcome. you from this hellhole of a call that ended up. I will, I will let you go about your days. Thank you again. Bye. Farewell. Thank you again, Katie, for the interview. It was extremely kind of you. And be sure to go and follow her on all the socials for wholesome and funny content. The next cosplayer is one I was going to feature later on, but wanted to feature earlier. Again, for sort of two reasons. Number one, he is mostly known for his TARDIS CG models, but also does Fantastic Eleven's Doctor cosplay. And two, he's just been really nice to me. <laughs> Flattery gets you everywhere, what can I say? But genuinely, he's such a lovely person to chat to, and he also did this. <laughs> I basically challenged him to do it, to like put a TARDIS in the background, you won't, and he did. His name is Aiden, or TARDIS Man, on his social medias, and where he does do these incredible, amazing, lifelike TARDIS CG models, he also does Eleventh Doctor. I'm jealous, it's jealousy. Again, I swear this show is fueled by mostly jealousy. I don't know why. Also, he's got a real deep voice. I, I don't know why I have to mention this, but when I first heard it, wow, it was cool. <laughs> Here's one for you Fifth Doctor fans out there, Nicky Boy Crow. He's a big fan of duetting, so if you want to do some TikTok duets with someone, Nicky Boy Crow is one to go for. Also his Fifth Doctor costume, again, the jealousy's kicking in. Amazing, I love it. Anyway. Mustache. Wait, what am I doing? I've got a show to film. TARDIS Monkey is a creator I've known about for a very long time now. In fact, I actually remember passing her 
at a uh, MCM London convention a, a few years ago. But I was too scared to say hi and say you had a cool cosplay because I'm a nervous boy, really. <laughs> In all seriousness, her cosplay collection is terrific and she was recently featured on Doctor Who's official Twitter account. So definitely go and send some love her way. But every time I close my eyes, I, I can see him standing there before those horrible Dalek creatures came to the house. Ah yes, Daleks killing the ones that you love. I hope to never have to endure that kind of evil and sadness. I'm liking my aunt so far, but the memory of him won't always be a sad one, you know? It's hard for you to understand with you being so ancient. Eh? Uh, sorry, I, I meant old. Well, that's not better. Uh, wise? You may continue with caution. <laughs> When featuring podcasts, I sort of hit a brick wall in the scripting process because there's not much to say about each one, if I'm being honest. Not saying they are bad or that they are boring. It's just me. It's me. Firstly, there's Mono Supreme. It currently has five episodes now as I record this, with their most recent featuring a special guest, Richard Lloyd. It's also featured creators such as Doctor Who Adventures, and I imagine more guests will come. So if you like that sort of thing, go and check them out. Was it the goal from the beginning to do Doctor Who, or...? Mm, yes, it was. There, there wasn't ever anything else, to be honest, like, just in my life in general, there hasn't <laughs> been anything else, really, like, to compare same, with Doctor same. Who, and certainly not on, on in terms of uh, for YouTube, so, yeah. And, like, along the way, I've dabbled with other stuff a tiny bit, but, um, yeah, like, I've always stuck to Doctor Who, that's always been the thing, and it... It always will be. Then there is Gallifrey's Most Wanted, who talks specifically about Doctor Who episodes and their opinions on them, much like a Review of Death. So if you like the sound of that, go and check them out. Finally, there's Two Watch Who, and again, it's a fairly self-explanatory name. There's two of them, and they watch Doctor Who. <laughs> Despite being only on episode two of this show, I feel like I've already started going insane. <laughs> That's got to be some sort of record, right? Like Dalek's Monster Plan, we thought we'd break it down a bit with these longer stories. Break it down. Because ten, ten is a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I wouldn't do We've it. We've done quite well. We've had so many six-parters this season. I'm sort of used to them now. Are you? <laughs> no, are you? No. <laughs> I'm never used to them. Sorry if it seems like I'm zooming past the podcast section. Uh, in fact, whilst I'm on the subject, if you do get featured and you feel I sort of rushed through yours, don't think that means I didn't like it or no, and I'm just featuring it for the sake of it. I love everything I feature. Whether I have time to watch or listen to all of it, know that I love what I feature. I love sharing the love. It mostly comes down to the scripting, right? Like, I will have so much to talk about one thing and not too much to talk about the other and it will automatically make the other seem bad or worse, and that's just not the case. So again, if you do get mentioned and you don't feel like I did yours justice, that's what the comments are for, that's what Twitter's for. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to... Finally, there are some random shout-outs. They don't really fit in the segments I have in place, and I can't really make new segments as it's just sort of the one thing. If I had multiple of the things, then yes, I'd make a set. If there's a better way of me doing this, please let me know. I'm just a boy. A 22-year-old boy, but I'm just a boy. Firstly, there is a fan-made video game made by the lovely Clayton called Forgotten Time. There's not a lot out about it, but judging from his Twitter feed and the videos he posts, it looks awesome. <laughs> Definitely a project to keep your eye on. Next, there is the very popular Mr. Tardis doing his Trip of a Lifetime marathon. For those of you who Somehow don't know, he is going through each episode of series one and seeing if it holds up. I don't often watch review style content, but I don't know, I've always made an exception for Mr. Tardis. I don't know why, I honestly can't tell you why. <laughs> Something just inherently entertaining about him, I suppose, and then it's no surprise why he's so popular. Let's talk about our primary threat. The Autons were the villains that brought Doctor Who into the 1970s and into colour, and now they're here to usher in a new era of the show. The Autons are such a quietly brilliant choice to open the series. Firstly, fans are happy because this is a classic series element, further hitting home that this is a continuation of what they loved, but they're also able to work absolutely stand alone. Next, there is Doctor Who Adventures for 2. 
two reasons. I keep doing the two reasons thing today, I don't know why. Firstly, there is draft five of their Lego Doctor Who stuff, where they essentially create custom Lego figure ideas based around Doctor Who characters and show them off. Much like Brick Pandorica earlier, you'll see it and you'll want to buy it, then you realise, oh, no money. <laughs> but they've also shown off a new creator in their Amazing Creators series, essentially just a way of promoting the best and boldest of the Doctor Who community. And this time it's Dominic, aka the Purple Doctor, and yeah, he's great. There's not much else to say. Both creators are great. Go and check them out. It's the Slovene, a very iconic villain from the first series of the revival. They have a new head mold for their elongated head to make them slightly taller, among other minifigures. Dom hosted regular head-to-head -head quiz rounds in the style of ITV's The Chase, aka that show Bradley Walsh hosts. But of course, with a Doctor Who twist. And then finally, there is Ferb on Who. I was linked his Lockdown Reaction series, where him and a bunch of his friends filmed themselves reacting to an episode, and it's sort of a best of their reactions. The most recent episode they've reacted to is School Reunion, and it's hilarious. <laughs> the link to the full playlist of this series is down below in the description if you want to check it out. And I would recommend it is Bants. There's one of the dog there. There is. Huh? Yeah, it was always so funny to be watching because I was like, every time I see this, I'm like, you're bringing the Dalek in there. He couldn't have parked like a little bit more of the left. Ah, uh, yes, this time I'm mixing things up with a challenge, specifically an art challenge. I thought this could be a fun thing to start with the community to get us all together on one little thing. This first one is going to be very open-ended. It's going to be nice and simple to start the ball rolling art. <laughs> Basically just do Doctor Who fan art of a, a, a character or a monster or a doctor, whatever you want. <laughs> At the top of the description below you will find a link to a Twitter thread that I will be starting off with my entry. <laughs> it's no fun if Jack can't enter too. I've got my art here, not that you can see it on the camera. I'll take a better picture and put it here. <laughs> but yes, reply to that tweet with your art and I will be retweeting every single one. A again, it's all about promotion, this show. This is all about inclusivity and positivity, so let's all have some fun and do some Doctor Who art together. Oh, has that been like that the whole time? I'm an idiot. Thank you so much for watching this episode. For some reason, this episode is very tiring to make. I, I feel I'm worried I'm getting stuck in a rut already. Uh, I, I don't I don't know why. I need to find a way of making this more enjoyable for myself, so I can make it more enjoyable for you. Thank you for watching, and roll credits. Yeah.